So now we know enough about 3ds Max to create simple objects. Like this ice cream cone. Who doesn't love ice cream, so that seems like a good place to start. 3ds Max makes it very easy to create simple objects like this through the Modify panel. Okay, so in your Command panel, take a look up here. You've got your Modify panel. And if you select an object with the Modify panel active, you will see its so-called Modifier Stack. So that's what we have going on here. That's how I've shaped my ice cream. Okay, so let me take you through the steps of how to use the modifier stack to create this simple object. I'm going to just drag a selection rectangle around both those objects and hit delete on my keyboard. Next, I want to snap to the grid because it's always a good idea to keep your scenes organized and when you model something to model it right at the center of your world or the origin of your coordinate system. Okay, so currently I got my grid turned off. Remember the G key is your hotkey for the grid. I hit it a couple times there to show you. It will toggle your grid on and off. And I'm going to turn on snaps. Okay, I want to make sure I have the 3D snaps. Some of these buttons have flyouts in this. We want to make sure we're using 3D snaps in this case. And we also want to make sure that we're snapping to the correct thing. We want to snap just to the grid points. So I'm going to right click on my 3D snaps button and just verify that grid points is the only option activated. And I'll close that. Then I'll make my ice cream cone, my sugar cone. So we'll go back to our create panel. Cone. And the cone is one of those primitives that you have to do a certain magic combination of clicks and drags in order to get it right. And it can be a bit frustrating, especially if you have snaps turned on. So let me lead you through this. I'm going to click in the center of my grid in order to create the cone and then drag to define the width of the cone. I'm going to release the mouse button and drag again to define the height. Then I'm going to click my mouse button once, and now I'm setting the radius, second radius. And then I'll click again to finish the cone, and if I'm done making cones, I'll hit the right mouse button, right click to exit. Okay, so you have to click and drag in a very specific manner, but of course you can always go to the modify panel afterwards and correct any problems. So in my modify panel with my cone selected, I can now adjust things like my height and radius. Again, don't worry about units in this case. We're just using generic units. All right, so that's good enough for my cone. Let's make a sphere back to the create panel. We still have snap to grid enabled. Click on sphere, click in the center of the viewport at the origin drag to create the sphere, right click to exit creation, then go to the modify panel and adjust the radius. You might also need to move the sphere up or down, so let's turn off snapping. Actually, we can use the shortcut for that, which is S. And we can move this up or down in whichever viewport, select my front view, move it up or down and adjust it and make sure that it's pretty much where I want it to be. And then I'm going to add a modifier. So I'm in the modify panel currently. And you'll see here it says modifier list. This is a pull down list. So if you click here, you'll see an alphabetical list of all these different modifiers. There are many modifiers here that have very specialized uses. We're going to use a generic one called an FFD, and that stands for Free Form Deformer. Okay, I'm scrolling down and I'm looking for something called FFD box. There it is. So when I click on that, now a modifier is added to my sphere. So now I can change the shape of my sphere through this FFD modifier. Before I start trying to alter the shape of this, I want to change the number of control points. I have all these little boxes here and I can move these around to change the shape of my sphere, but I have too many control points. So I'll go down to the FFD parameters and click set number of points. I get a dialog box. We need to set the length and width to 2. 
So I'll hit two and then press tab and then two on my keyboard. On the height, I think we need five. So I'm going to press tab again and press five and say, okay. So now I've got a bunch of control points I can start moving around to change the shape of my sphere. In order to access those control points, I need to open up the sub-object modes of my FFD modifier. So here we've got the modifier. I need to click the little plus sign. It opens up what are called sub-object modes. And I can enter a sub-object mode by clicking it. Now I'm in control points sub-object mode. And I can select a point and move it to change the shape of my sphere. Okay, I'll do control Z to undo to adjust this in the front viewport. So I'll go over there and zoom in a little bit. Control Alt middle mouse button to zoom in. Drag a box to select those control points. And yes, I can move them up and down. And I can also scale them, undo, and we'll go to scale. Actually, I'll just hit the R key, and then I can scale. It's so easy in 3ds Max. So all I have to do is maybe grab a few control points. Maybe I'll go back to my perspective view and dolly in a little bit. Go back to my move tool, which is W. Click on control points and move them around in order to add a little bit more chaos a little bit more believability to my ice cream cone so that it doesn't look computer generated. It's got a little bit of randomness to it. When I'm done adjusting control points, I can click the sub-object mode again to turn it off. And only then will I be able to select other objects. If I'm in control points mode or any sub-object mode, I won't be able to select another object in the scene, so I'll need to remember to turn it off when I'm finished. Of course, I can change the object color, and I can name my objects too. Let's name this one. We'll call that Ice Cream Cone. And then down here I can select this other object, and I can call this one Sugar Cone. And of course, I can change the color as well. I can hit F4 on my keyboard so I can see polygons or edged faces. And there you go. It's easy breezy.